Um, but all is not sweet in Sunset. Hi, my name is Joanne Carson, and I'm the writer of A Viking Ghost for Valentine's Day. And today I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the story and how well it's doing. It sells on Amazon, and it's been out for two weeks. And during that time, it's fluctuated from fourth to seventh place in new releases, short reads, science fiction, and fantasy. Um, first of all, I'll read you the blurb. To feed her three children, widow Abigail Jenkins takes the only job available in Sunset Cove, night cleaner in the notorious haunted tea house. She figures the wild supernatural rumors about the place are pure fiction. After all, ghosts don't exist. Eric Eklund, a sexy spirit from Sweden, is over a thousand years old. Having missed his chance at Valhalla, the Viking spends his time roaming the world and gambling. That is, until he sees Abby, whose feisty, earthly spirit turns his ghostly world upside down. When the two meet, sparks fly, but their romance is interrupted by a poltergeist hunting children. What happens when you mix up naughty Viking ghost built like a Norse god, a strong woman who suffers no fools, and a nasty poltergeist? Answer, another gambling ghost story. A Viking Ghost for Valentine's Day is a light-hearted novella filled with love, laughter, and just enough ghouliness to thrill and chill you to the bone. And um, I open with a quote from Edgar Allan Poe because I love Edgar Allan Poe. Quote, the boundaries which divide life from death are at best shadowy and vague. What shall, who shall say where the one ends and where the other begins? The man, even with one sentence, gives me the shivers. That's my quote. And the opening of the story, chapter one, The Haunted Tea House. Abigail Jenkins stood with her hands on her hips in the pouring rain, staring at the famous tea house across the street, the one with the wicked reputation for all things supernatural. She expected it to shimmer or gurgle or do something odd at any moment, but the structure did nothing of the sort. It was a tired old house in need of paint and repair on a street of tired old houses. Its cloak of normalcy seduced her, daring her to come closer for a better look, as if it were a witch in a pretty dress offering poison candy. But she had heard the wicked stories about the place, and she was no fool. Things happened in this house, things that were far from ordinary. A shiver slithered up her spine. Of all the haunted houses in all the world, why did this one pick me? Trying to shake off a deep sense of foreboding, she wiped the rain rain off her face and crossed the street to face the house. Whether she liked it or not, the only job available in Sunset Cove was night cleaner in this place, and she needed a job. Being a widow with three kids to feed, the word choice had vanished from her vocabulary a long time ago. The place could be haunted by the devil himself, and it still wouldn't matter. She needed money, especially now her baby was sick and needed expensive meds. Gulping down the paralyzing fear brewing in her blood, she climbed the long wooden stairway up to the front door. It opened before she knocked. And as she goes in the house, she meets Azalea, who owns the house. And she's uh, a tea leaf reader, and a very interesting character, who appears in every one of the ghost stories. And um, she tells her what her job entails and which rooms to clean and how to clean them and there's one room she's not to go in ever no matter what sound she hears no matter what happens she's not to go in that room and of course she does and that's where she meets Eric and the love affair starts um but all is not sweet in Sunset Cove because then a poltergeist comes along and he wants to eat her children. And uh, Eric helps her out of that situation. It's a fun story. It's action-packed. There's emotion on every page. Um, I like to say my my Gambling Ghost series is a mix, a sweet and saucy mix, which means it's there's a lot of innuendo but no explicit sex. Um, and it's saucy and it's fun and it's a mix of fantasy, adventure, and romance. So if you like a fast-moving story, you want a story that you just won't put down and you'll read it in a couple hours, the Gambling Ghost Stories are for you. It's a bit like Kristen Painter and Abby Fox, a frothy romance, um, gothic with a wink. It's fun. So I hope you um, enjoy one of my stories sometime, and I hope you have good books to read. Thanks for listening to me. Good night.